An evolutionary biologist named William Muir studied chickens. He was interested in productivity. Relatively easy to measure, you just count the eggs. He wanted to know what could make his chickens more productive, so he devised an experiment. Chickens live in groups, so to start with, he selected just an average flock. But he then created a second group of the most productive chickens that he could find. You could call them super chickens, and together they formed a super flock. Over time, what did he find? Well, the first group, the average group, were doing just fine. They were all plump, fully feathered, and egg production had increased dramatically. What about the second group? Well, all but three were dead. They'd bullied and pecked the rest to death. The idea that nurses often aggressively bully each other probably shocks anyone not in healthcare, but feels all too familiar to those of us who are. As nurses, we are acutely aware of the problem, but often have very little idea how the behaviour gets set in motion or what can be done to stop it. Over half of the nursing profession have experienced or witnessed bullying, and I'm talking nurse to nurse bullying. Evidence suggests that bullying in nursing knows no bounds and does not discriminate who gets targeted, and the result is the same as the chicken experiment, aggression and dysfunction, and we desperately need to find another way. My research was about understanding why bullying continues to flourish in the nursing profession by collecting and analysing nurses' testimonies of bullying and from those stories uncover the evolution of bullying. I found that bullying in nursing has evolved over time and alters with context. What once was physical and verbal now is tactically accepted with a wink or a nod. Bullying is also now used as a means of achieving status or promotion and a failure to acknowledge or take steps to end it encourages the behaviour. The impact of bullying has also changed. Nurses used to suffer in silence, but now they are leaving the profession because of incompetent management of bullying. Organisational policies and zero tolerance campaigns are a welcome attempt to address the destruction caused by bullying, but this study found their effectiveness remains questionable as a policy is only as effective as the commitment of the organisation or manager to enforce it. My hope is that this research will lead to a radical review of how bullying is managed, because there's a lot at stake, and I don't want us to peck each other to death. We won't solve the problem if we expect it to be solved by a super flock. We are all part of the solution, and it is only when we acknowledge and accept the elephant, or in this case the chicken, in the room, that we might liberate and gain momentum to be free range.